my name is Billy Jay. Uh, this is another video on the 1954 proposal car SO2151. Uh, this video is going to be a lot more uh, detail of the car. I'm going to show a lot of images of the car and the detail of what it looked like before. And as I go through all the pictures, I will explain everything in detail, color, description, everything that goes on with this car. Give a little better idea of uh, the, the forensics and the history behind, behind SO2151. So, first of all, uh, to explain a little bit uh, about this car, uh, in a couple books, there's there's Harley Earl's book, which shows uh, great pictures uh, and a nice little description of the car. Uh, it mentions in this book, even in, in this Motorama book, that if the car went through the styling department and had anything to do with Harley Earl, which just did, uh, even Zora, uh, I think uh, is. Duntoff, it was his name, hard to pronounce, uh, had styling with this. Uh, the previous owner of this car uh, that bought this car in 1975, George Campbell, uh, met him at an NCIS uh, convention uh, on the West Coast, met Zora, and Zora goes, oh yeah, he told him that he had this car, and he goes, yeah, he said, I worked on the back end and did designing and brought the exhaust out. Uh, to the back end of the car, coming out the fenders versus the body. So Zora had hands on this car on design and stuff. So, but one description I got to clear, make sure that we know is that even if it wasn't displayed as a Motorama car and traveled, if it went through the styling department, it was called a Motorama car. So that is a fact. So this car did not really travel with the Motorama, uh, but it was definitely the concept car that went through the styling department to become uh, what they what Zora wanted to do a facelift on SO on the '55 Corvette. So uh, his idea was to change it, boost sales, and make the car look you know a lot more pleasing and cool looking. So it changed it from the '53 and '54. Uh, but sales were so poor, this got terminated, so they did not choose this car. But still kind of classified as a Motorama car, even though it did not go through a turning. Uh, this thing was a top secret, super top secret. In a Motorama book, Harley Earl's book, Nolan Adams, they describe how this and other cars were top secret. So nobody knew too much about it, only management was allowed in there, employees. Uh, so uh, what we know with this car, uh, going back forensically, is that the body was one of the first 15 bodies made. And with that, there is, as you're going to see through these pictures that I want to show, there is so much yellow on this car that it was definitely painted yellow in 53. At the end of 53, body went over to styling department and became SO2151 because that assigned number was given to this body. And there they did the trunk lid and that's where I guess, you know, Zora and a few other designers was involved in doing the fins on the side or the gills, the vents, whatever you want to call it. And then they chose to paint the car Bermuda green. So, uh, with that said, I want to show you guys images and pictures of detail from suspension when I was taking it apart and cleaning it to, uh, oh my gosh, I want to show so much detail. As many yellow photographs of, of yellow paint that was remaining on the car and then green, so I'm going to show all this stuff. Uh, so many other books, I mean, I literally have stacks of books. These, these Corvette books all have images of it. Uh, this is the best book um, with
at the description talking about Zor Duntoff, um, and it's got a nice two page thing of all the description of SO2151, along with you know designers and other people that was involved in that. So, uh, great book. Yeah, Star Spangled Sports Car, uh, America's Star Spangled Sports Car. So it's really, really good book. It's a good book for all Corvette owners. So anyway, with that said, uh, we'll get on to the pictures. So George Campbell, that bought the car in 1975, he kept everything. As you'll see in this little image, uh, the Hemmings motor, the 1975 Heming motor, addressed to him. Uh, with the ad in it, uh, there's the business card from Empire Chevrolet, along with the pink slip that was given to him, the California pink slip that was given to him uh, when he bought the car from Empire Chevrolet in 1975. This is the owner and his wife from uh, Empire Chevrolet. These images here were taken, uh, there's actually 36 of these next images were taken by George Campbell. Uh, this was taken on the lot uh, of Empire Chevrolet in 75. Uh, so this was the day that he came to pick the car up. And there's the SO2151 tag uh, with the crusty with paint on it. Uh, no door tag. Uh, as you can see, there was no VIN tag on the door jam. Uh, there it is loaded on the trailer, ready for its journey uh, to Oregon. From Nevada, California, um, loaded down, and you'll see the image there of the of the 1966 uh, Ford Ranchero that's really squatted down from the weight. Uh, but these images were taken by George Campbell. Now this is on his property when he got it back home. Uh, you can see the engine was pretty much complete. Uh, did it run? I have no idea. Uh, there you can see the interior, but the engine was pretty much complete. It had the carbs on it, the overfill tank, uh, the master cylinder, the heater box. Uh, here is in his garage. He started taking everything off the car, uh, scraping some of the primer off. As you can see, there's yellow showing through. Uh, he had taken the heater box out, master cylinder, uh, the carbs and intakes all removed from the car. Uh, but uh, it was some kind of bogus top put on it. But these are images that George Campbell took, and it's uh, it's spectacular that he took these pictures. Uh, of course, the red engine, uh, not orange, uh, which was a solid lifter prototype engine, and that was still in his garage. Uh, I think uh, there's his photograph, George Campbell's photograph of the tag um, after it's been all scraped and cleaned up. This was in a storage container, so this would have been probably in the 2000 year, uh, probably prior to it being picked up. Uh, there's the exhaust outlet and the trunk area where the gas tank goes. And those are the original cast moldings with 2151 cast in each one of them, saying left, right, uh, etc. But those were cast, not stamped aluminum those are cast metal and uh, there's the grill uh, the opening with green overspray as you can see it had green overspray on it so we definitely know that it was green so it's uh, pretty interesting these are correspondence between Nolan Adams and George Campbell um, a lot of these are dated 1976. Uh, there's about a dozen of these letters that uh, Nolan Adams was going uh, to General Motors and making contact with General Motors to uh, get as much information on SO2151 as he could. Uh, so these are just, a, I think, a dozen letters from uh, Nolan Adams to George Campbell in regards to 2151. Um, great correspondence uh, getting the black and white images and as much information on SO21 as George uh, needed and uh, Nolan was extremely helpful uh, for George so uh, these are just a few. 
These images were sent from Nolan Adams. These were original photographs of the yellow car, the yellow hardtop car. Uh, GM sent these pictures to George, uh, excuse me, to Nolan Adams. Uh, that picture was from a color negative. Uh, that's the yellow car, that's the yellow hardtop car. Uh, there had to be some kind of connection with this yellow uh, body because see, you see the yellow paint on the side of the car here. But General Motors sent those images to Nolan Adams who in turn gave them to George Campbell. Uh, notice the dash, there's green on the dash where the pad goes, yellow on the dash, this is the interior. Uh, and this is George Campbell uh, who passed away in 2020 at the age of 86. It is so unfortunate that George Campbell never got to see this car completed as it looked in 1954. He learned a lot of history of SO2151, the 1955 Proposal Corvette. Nolan Adams gave George several black and white images, 8 by 10 images, photographs of uh, 1954 Corvette taken uh, at General Motors Studio. George wrote this in his own handwriting. It is no small miracle considering the circumstances despite its neglect and unperceived identity. This important piece of Corvette history has survived with its original engine and drivetrain and lives to be restored back to what the designers at the Tech Center had originally intended. It will live again. 1955 Proposal Corvette. And going back to the dash, these are images that I took. Uh, you see the beige. Underneath the beige is the yellow. Uh, there's the side above the vents. You see the yellow patches, you know, remnants from a long time ago. The side doors, original green with yellow. Uh, you look at the fiberglass. This was Again, one of the first 15 bodies made prior to production of the 300. Uh, underneath the headlights, yellow uh, on both. As you see on both, uh, there was yellow underneath where the bezel would go to cover up the headlight. Uh, there's the rear quarter, uh, yellow. You see the damage, but you see the yellow paint that's on there. That's the fender that I had to replace. Uh, very poorly damaged, but it had been repaired. Uh, that's the between the seat console. Uh, yellow. Uh, definitely this car was painted yellow. That's after I sanded the paint off, but again where the dash pad goes it's yellow. That's doing the fiberglass resin over all the cracks because it was cracked so bad. Now there's remnants of the yellow. Uh, little patches of yellow on the fender that got broke. Again yellow, but look how poorly this thing was cracked and damaged. But how rough the fiberglass was. It was a very coarse fiberglass. You can see where it had been repaired with the yellow underneath. These are pieces that had broke off. This car was very much most definitely painted yellow in 1953. Um, trying to you know fill the voids of uh, you know proving uh, here's where the turn signal lens goes the parking lot lens yellow then with the Bermuda green on top um, it's it's amazing that this survived uh, without somebody stripping the paint off uh, but yellow as you see on both door jams uh, inside of the doors, yellow with the light green on top. It's, you know, there's yellow on the valance. You see the red engine underneath, but, uh, and then these are the black and white images that General Motors had given to Nolan Adams. These are the original, original, uh, as he states in his letters, that he gave George Campbell the original black and white. 8 by 10s uh, so these are scanned from from the original so it's amazing that um, what good a shape they're they're in but they've been pretty well preserved there's the Bel Air grill that was a 55 Bel Air grill 
that's the left side with the chrome inserts and of course the back end the trunk with the exhaust ports coming out through the fenders amazing how they thought to do that and I there's 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 roughly 30 black and white images there's Bermuda green on the the Motorama Biscayne uh, this was an image that I took of the SO 2151 tag now you're going to see green these are photographs that I took uh, there was green you know here and there throughout the whole car so I documented just about all the places I could where the green was still showing just to prove that it was green in those in those black and white pictures uh, and of course the underneath that is black that is black primer uh, they used to call it hot rod primer that's of course the inside of the trunk which is still looks horrible but uh, you know it's original so it's very much uh, it's like finding dinosaur bones that's the gas tank area uh, again very much uh, original now these are two one of one cars uh, Billy J has got both these cars uh, the 1969 Boss 302 Shelby and the of course this SO2151 so those are definitely two one of ones there's the original brass trunk hinge uh, this was the frame the day that I pulled the body off and the brake drums which has got the original brake shoes um, and these are color marks as I started cleaning you, you see the white uh, there's orange on the tie rod so as I was dealing these I documented orange on top of the upper control arm uh, big areas of, of orange I mean they had pretty healthy orange uh, identification marks there's the original I put those I put the gas the, the rubber washers back on and including the nuts there's some more orange on the spindle uh, ivory and orange on the spindle this is front suspension lower control arm orange there's yellow on the tip of the spindle that goes up to the control arm magenta on the inner brake drum uh, housing and there it is finished uh, what it looks like now but yes, on the, sh on the shocks, I used all the original rubber. It's the front suspension, which I did not dismantle. The only thing I took off was the sway bar. Uh, there you see the frame being very pitted uh, and the horrible welds. Now, I removed these. These were for the emergency brake cable. Uh, removed them from the car. Bolts, of course, broke. Uh, pried them apart, sandblasted them, uh, put the new cables in, and painted them black. There's a spring housing, uh, uh, leaf spring, yellow marking on that, yellow marking on the axle hub. Uh, I used the original brake uh, blocks, I guess you'd call it, for the brake lines. That's the rear axle rubber bumper snubber, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and there it is put back on after it was painted. I used the original nuts and original shocks putting back on the car. That's the rear. Uh, but yeah, I, I used all the original rubbers other than the sway bar. I put new bushings on the sway bar. Original motor mount rubbers, original motor mount bolt. Um, so much of this car is so um, so original. The, the transmission mount is original. Uh, there's a, the motor mount. You can see how it's cracked, uh, but it is original. That's the uh, overfill bracket. That's original red, not orange. There's the carburetors. Uh, that's what the carburetor looks very nicely detailed. I had those rebuilt. They look great. Uh, this is a video of, of the frame. Again, the poor welds. I mean, it was amazing how this frame did survive. Um, it was in such rusted shape, but yet it wasn't rusted through. Lots of surface rust, uh, but not rotted out. So... Uh, again, I don't think the car got drove a lot. It definitely seen a lot of moisture. Uh, a lot of grease on there that I cleaned off. There's the brake shoes again. Uh, the original shocks with the nuts that I put back on. Uh, 
distributor is original. Uh, like I said, I did replace the sway bar bushings, so they have been replaced, but that's the only rubber. Literally all the little bumper rubber snubbers on the front suspension uh, are original. The sway bar rubber is original. Um, the, the frame, the wells are just atrocious. Uh, original tires, original rubber on the tires. White walls are so cracked, it's just unbelievable. But yet, there's a little Goodyear diamonds. And there's a steering column. I clean that up and recast that with color. Uh, but the Steering column is original, though you can see yellow, beige on that. Um, the body, this is of course prior to the body being put onto the car. Exhaust ports, it's really cool how they design that. Uh, Zora Argus Duntoff uh, was the one that designed that, and I believe this back end was done by him as well. Of course, I had to recreate all that. Uh, and managed to copy and, and uh, duplicate what he had done. Uh, it's amazing the designers how they come up with that. These are out of Nolan Lanham's book. Uh, I just had them enlarged. At that time when I did this video I did not have the original black and white images yet. Uh, so when I did this car, when I made the hood scoop, this is what I, what I used, uh, the Bel Air grill. Uh, I used all these images to copy and duplicate what the car was going to look like, including the license plate. Um, I copied, or, you know, I had that copied exact. And that's an image that George Campbell had taken, but Donald Adams turned it to black and white and put it in the book. The little bow ties that's on there is amazing. I think we'll get to open up the trunk, see what it looks like inside. And that's the inside of the trunk. Dusty and crusty and uh, I might say musty. But you can't, you can't blow it off. You have to just damp cloth to just to wipe the dust off of it. Uh, but it's all very much original. Very close to what it looked like originally. Now the speedometer shot, I will not vouch that that's the original speedometer. It was with the car. Um, do not know any history of it. Uh, it shows 6,000 miles. Is that correct? I have no idea. Uh, the bezel was horribly pitted. Uh, but now it's uh, been, you know, I put a brand new bezel on it. Of course that's the back end. Now I've got the cover over the tank. The, ga the gas tank is in the car at this point. There's the left side vents that I made. And then we'll get to the, de the, the firewall, which you can see how crude the firewall was. Uh, that's how one of the indications of the first 15 bodies, that uh, they were very crudely made. Uh, they didn't have the molds and the, the proper technique to doing fiberglass. Fiberglass at this point was so new uh, this was like exploring in outer space to these guys. There's a good shot of the Bel Air grill. Um, in some of the articles of the magazines, they refer to it as an egg crate grill. Um, it strictly was a 55 Bel Air grill that would just cut to size, curved to fit. Uh, now here's a little better detailed shot of, of the frame again, detailed with all the color markings carburetors, intakes on, air cleaners are original unchromed, they're not, they have not been re-chromed. Uh, I did re-chrome the air, uh, I don't know what you want to call those things, but the little baffles for the air cleaners to sit on. I chose to do that in chrome just because I thought, well, if this was a show car, uh, I think it deserved to be chromed. 
could not see any images of those at all, so I could not tell. Uh, the valve cover in the image that George Campbell took was a red valve cover. I did make this one chrome, uh, again, to make a dress up, so um, I hope I don't get punished for doing that, but I think it was worthy uh, using everything else so original in this car that uh, it does make a little bit of difference of dressing up the engine. But the frame was pretty straight, had some dents on it here and there, but um, like again the welds, I can't talk about the welds enough because the welds were so bad, but that's what they did back then. The exhaust is, of course, brand new, uh, not, uh, you know, the original one was too far gone. Uh, again, the original rubber axle snubbers uh, are original. Back to the tires again, and, and there's the crude welds where the X brace goes in. Um, there's a stamping on the rear of the um, transmission tail with the original insulated uh, tranny mount, transmission mount I should say. So I think at this point this engine had been started and run and uh, you know to make sure that everything was good to go before I put the body on so this was shortly before putting the body on. The detail I tried to get as close as possible I literally hand painted all the bolts I did not even remove the Zert fittings I just cleaned them with a wire brush, scrubbed them, and primed everything and painted everything. Fuel pump is a brand new, out of the box, dated 1955. Um, the original one was absolutely filled with just rust. It was very bad. Uh, diaphragm was completely dry rotted, uh, so it starts uh, starts and runs with that new fuel pump. Great, so. I went 12 volts with this engine uh, so it would crank easier. In 55 that was started to be an option for uh, that they start switching to go to 12 volts and since this was a very much a prototype car with a prototype engine I chose to do 12 volt. Could not tell there was no battery in it. Um, everything else basically works off the 12 volt uh, battery. Uh, I did not have to change anything. so. The points are still the original points inside the distributor, too, uh, which is amazing. They were still decently clean, uh, ran it on an old sun machine and made sure that everything was set. And it worked, it operated, so it did not change the points. So it is ready to go. Here's the, here's the inside of one of the wheels when I sandblasted. It had green paint. Two of those wheels still had that. There's the sidewalls you can see cracked. Uh, pretty pretty bad. There's one of the drums. The drums were all original General Motor uh, part number drums. I put back the original bearings that this car was put in with from the factory. Uh, those are the original ones. I just re-greased them and put them back in. Original seals. Um, the original races. Uh, cleaned everything I'm up and put them back in and it is very original. This door is significant. Uh, that is the original door. As you, you can see the one side is plugged. Uh, that was from 2151 and when they plugged it, it was used for the new moldings because the molding only went three quarter down the drawer. But in 53, that door had the hole in it for the molding that went all the way down the door. These are the signs. You can see the uh, Motorama cars with the signs, so I thought this car was worthy of a sign. And here is Tracer Dog that's going to explain the new sign. So I thought it was worthy for the sign to be made uh, to show with this car with display. And there's Tracer.